welcome to Jay Coletti's Racket Reviews. My name is Jay Coletti and I will be your hostess. Here on this channel, we are here to discuss all things organized crime. I'm very excited to get into our topic today, which is the structure, rituals, and rules of Cosa Nostra. Let's get to it. The Mafia is probably the best known organized crime syndicate in the world, certainly in the United States and Sicily. We hear the term Mafia a lot in our daily lives, whether it be in books, in movies, in games, whatever it is that you're doing, you've probably heard the term Mafia before, but today I really want to get into how the Mafia works and why it works as a governing body for crime. The Cosa Nostra is very hierarchical in their methods and how they do things. In the American Cosa Nostra, per family, we have the Don, the Underboss, the Consigliere, the Capo Regimes or Capos, the Soldiers, and the Associates. In the Sicilian Cosa Nostra, we have a very similar structure, but of course, slightly different names. For the Don, we have the Capo Familia, we still have the Consigliere. For the Underboss, we have the Soto Capo, that literally means Underboss. We have the Capo di Cine, the Group Boss or the Capo Regime, and the Uomini d'Onore, or Men of Honor, or Maid Men. I'm going to start with the Don. Obviously, this is the head honcho, the boss, the godfather, however you want to refer to the Don, this is the boss of any given Mafia family. The term Don originates from the Latin word Dominus, meaning Lord or Master. He is responsible for all major decisions and he gets a cut of every business in his family. Typically, the Don is either the family founder or is elected by all of the capos. In the event of a tie in this election, the underboss has the final vote. Now moving on to the consigliere, probably my favorite of the positions in the Mafia family because it is so unique. Uh, let's get into it. The consigliere or counselor is the advisor to the Don. This position is very similar to the vizier in Muslim culture and may even be the origin of this particular position. The consigliere's main role is to keep the family legitimate. Typically, the consigliere is a stockbroker or lawyer who is not directly involved in criminal acts. The role is usually reserved for a man the Don trusts implicitly. While the consigliere is not a decision maker, it's important to note that the Don trusts him, so the consigliere is a man of high respect. The underboss is similar to the vice president in the Mafia family in that if something were to happen to the Don, whether he be arrested or killed, the underboss typically is the individual who would take the role of Don for the family. The underboss is also in charge of all of the capos and is usually promoted to the position of underboss after being a loyal capo himself. So now we're into the capo regime. This literally means regiment head in Italian. Uh, capos are the captains of the soldiers. Normally capos are nominated by the underboss and chosen by the Don. Capos run their small families of soldiers, but must adhere to the rules set in place by the Don. Most families consist of about four to nine capos, all of whom have about 10 soldiers they are over. So let's get into the soldiers. The soldiers are the mafia members that are at the level of associate, who are of Italian descent, who have proved themselves in some way or somehow to the mafia family. These soldiers are usually recommended by capos for family membership and tend to work beneath the capo who recommended him. If there are multiple openings for a soldier position and there are several soldier recommendations, the Don will decide who steps up from associate to the coveted role of soldier. Soldiers carry out the day-to-day -day grunt work of the mafia and are the lowest ranking official members. Now let's get into the unofficial members, the associates. The associates are not directly involved in the Mafia. Think of associates as dirty cops, lawyers, judges, politicians, anybody who is getting paid by the Mafia, but is not necessarily a member of a Mafia family. These are men on the take, or the payroll of the Mafia. Non-Italians are never supposed to make it past the title of associate. Associates are the corrupt men who do the Mafia's bidding and keep suspicion off the family. The associates are typically men who you think of who do favors for or owe favors to the Mafia. So now let's get into a little bit more terminology. We have made men. So made men are everyone besides associates, so from soldiers to the Don, 
who have sworn an oath of loyalty to the family. Swearing an oath to the family usually requires an initiation. The initiation is an enormous ceremony and very sacred to the Cosa Nostra. The initiation ceremony is different for every Mafia family, but is still a very, very important part of it, and also a little bit cultish. The initiation ceremonies typically consist of the following. The man who's getting made is taken into a room with armed guards and sat at a table with a number of other high-ranking members of the family. The man is then asked to swear an oath of loyalty to the family and follow their rules and keep their promises, which we'll get into in just a moment. The man is then asked to slice his finger and have his blood dripped onto the image of a saint. The bloodstained image is then set on fire and placed into the man's hands, where he then swears that he will keep his promises to the family, lest his soul burn in hell like the image of that saint. Pretty intense, and like I said, Kind of cultish. Let's get into some of those promises that these made men are swearing on their eternal souls to keep. The promises the made men gives to the family are usually some version or combination of the following. Being loyal to the members of this family only, so no double crossing with other families. Being rational or not getting worked up or hot-headed easily. Respecting the men above you. Not sleeping with, flirting with, or being disrespectful towards the sisters, mothers, wives, or girlfriends of your fellow members. Omerta, the code of silence that we discussed in a previous video. And some sort of promise having to do with the drug trade. Originally, the promise is said to have been to never get involved in the dirty business of trading drugs. Nowadays, obviously that didn't take. The promise is widely believed to be that the made man is never to actually partake in drugs himself if he's going to be part of Cosa Nostra. Now that you understand the Mafia family, the structure, how it works, I want to take this to the next step. First, allow me to clear up a very common misconception. Being in a Mafia family does not necessarily mean that you're related to the family for the name's sake. Also, a family does not, a mafia family does not even necessarily derive its name from the dawn of said family. Usually, the family's name originates from the founding dawn or godfather, or is renamed for a very influential or unifying dawn who has taken on the role. You also might be thinking to yourself, why do all these families leave each other alone? Wouldn't this kind of be like the Wild West? Wouldn't there be families who are constantly warring with each other to gain more power? If you thought that, you're not mistaken. Up until 1931, you would have been absolutely correct. Prior to 1931, many of the Mafia families all worked independently of one another and were constantly vying for power or fighting one another in gang wars. It was a very violent time, especially in New York City. This all changed in 1931 during the Castellamorese War. The struggle for control infamously came to a head in New York between 1929 and April 15, 1931. The Castellamorese War started after growing tensions and power struggles erupted between the factions of Salvatore Little Caesar Maranzano, the original head of what is now the Bonanno crime family, and Giuseppe Joe the Boss Messeria, the original head of what is now the Genovese family. In case you were wondering, it's called the Castella Marese War, due to the fact that Salvatore Maranzano was born in the Sicilian town of Castella Mare del Golfo. Salvatore Maranzano won this power struggle when Joe Massario was killed on April 15, 1931. Salvatore Maranzano declared himself Capo de Tutti Capi, or Boss of All Bosses. His reign as Boss of Bosses was relatively short-lived, however, about five months. This changed when Joe Mazzaria's lieutenant, or capo regime, Charles Lucky Luciano, ordered the killing of Salvatore Maranzano. Maranzano was murdered on September 10, 1931. Immediately following Salvatore Maranzano's death, Lucky Luciano established the Mafia Commission. This was the group of the Seven Dons, who had previously been warring prior to the Castella Marese War, who would then meet regularly to discuss the Mafia and how it was going to be run. The commission consisted of the Genovese family, represented by Charles Lucky Luciano, the Gambino family, represented by Vincent the Executioner Mangano, the Bonanno family, represented by Joseph Joe Bananas Bonanno, 
the Lucchese family, represented by Thomas Tommy Gagliano, the Colombo family, represented by Giuseppe Joe Profacci, the Buffalo crime family, represented by Stefano the Undertaker Magadino, and the Chicago outfit, represented by Al Scarface Capone. Maybe you've heard of him. The commission would later allow Jewish mobsters to participate as well. Such names as Meyer Lansky, Benjamin Bugsy Siegel, Louis Lepke Puchalter, Dutch Schultz, and Abner Longy Zwillman. Think of the commission members as senators who are representatives for their families and bring forth to the board any issues that they might be having as a family or in their area. The commission lasted in this state until 1985 when Paul, Big Paul Castellano was murdered. After this, it was then decided that the commission would no longer meet as a group of dons, but instead would work through voting and messengers, usually capos or underbosses. The five New York families in the Chicago outfit have maintained their commission seats since the order's inception in 1931. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Racket Reviews discussing the structure of the Cosa Nostra, how it actually works in function, and the establishment of the commission. Make sure to like, subscribe, and click the notifications button to get more Mafia content sent directly to your sub box. Ciao.